Hi, this is a video on how to make a speaker cable. I'm going to make it using these jacks, and here or here is the cable. Right, the first thing you need to do is prepare the cable. You will need a long nose pliers, a wire stripper solder, insulation tape, side cutters, and then you'll also need a soldering iron. It's important to set the soldering iron correctly. The sponge here should be wet, that's the first thing, and you can set it to about 375 degrees. Right. Okay, I've wet the sponge. Com it's, it's completely wet. It's totally wet. You can actually see the water there. That's just to give you an idea. The temperature is rising, and I'm now ready to continue with this project. Going to open the jack. Most importantly, Remember to feed the wire through the uh, back of the jack before you start uh, soldering. There we go. Now we open these wires. You can use a side cutter if you want. Alright, now if you look closely you'll see there's a red tag or a red line, stripe, whatever you want to call it on the one wire and nothing on the other. Sometimes there might just be writing on the one and nothing on the other. Might be a white stripe. Anyway, you decide. So I'm going to take the red as positive. And now I'm going to use my wire stripper. And how you set a wire stripper is there's a, a small nut here and the bolt here. And when you turn the nut, it opens the mouth. When you release the nut it closes the mouth so we want the point of the wire strip is that when you uh, tighten it on the wire it does not cut through all the threads so I'm gonna just in cut it a bit and pull and here cut and pull now I want to pre-solder the terminal so what I do is I grab the soldering iron, I clean the bit. Notice my bit is completely clean. In order to solder effectively, you must have a clean bit. Also, you must match the bit to the, the right size of bit. You must use the right size. There's no point using a surface mount bit for a thick cable. It does not get hot enough. Right, then the next thing is you need to use the right solder. Okay. So now what you do is you solder here. And you can see it's nicely formed there. You can then solder on the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal and we solder on the negative terminal there we go perfect solder right now what we want to do is we want to solder the wire that will be the speaker cable ends you can see how nicely it solders and you see how I use a, f a flatten it and I solder it you see how quickly it happens Okay. Make sure it's soldered nicely on both sides. There we go. Now, important point. You do not need such long cables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them with my side cutters. There we go. So that's all we got. Now take note. This is the positive at the red line. And this is the negative. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the both these cables into this jack 
going to need to open the mouth of this jack a little bit more with my long nose pliers just like that now I suggest you start with the negative because that's the one that is closer in there and you don't spend too long here because you don't want to burn the plastic around the terminal right now we sorry you point the iron on the wire the wire will heat up then the next thing is the terminal heats up there we go right you see that solder there now we will attempt to join the positive to the positive terminal same approach heat the wire first the reason is that we don't want too much heat on the terminal because it will melt the white plastic surrounding it right there we go Uh, I just want to flatten the back here and there's the soldered joint now now you have a choice you can at this point use tape that's what I use I use Nitto type tape before I close that uh, before I close that um, this this uh, steel and I just go around the joint just in case the reason why I'm doing this is if this breaks off or somebody stands on the cable and, and this thing snaps then this wire positive must not be able to touch the negative that's the only reason I do this now I place it in see I've still got a pigtail tail here now I place it in the space where I can crimp it or squeeze it closed now I just seat that there and I tighten the I tighten the the uh, steel around here now let's just have a look yeah now the pigtail carries on going round just like that if you're feeling like you want to you can add more like that now we can close it bring the jacket back there it is and now all you need to do now is screw it closed and that's it that is the one side of the speaker cable very important once you've made a speaker cable you must test the cable for continuity so this is the one side of the cable I will quickly build the other side and then what we want to do is we want to test the whether there are any shorts we want to do almost like an insulation test and how we do that is we take the multimeter that and we can either set it to ohms or continuity this is continuity now we want to check that the positive is touching the positive yes and the negative is touching the negative and now we can actually measure resistance and I'll go negative to positive and you can see a million ohms 
and uh, positive to negative. Uh, just measuring it through my hand. Okay, there we go. And you see offline mega ohms, telling you the insulation is is perfect. So I'll quickly build the other side, and then I'll show you the completed cable. Right, now I'm going to do the other side of this cable, and here I'm going to show you two other methods of fasten, of um, protecting these cables from shorting. The one is heat shrink, which requires matches, and the other one is using the plastic that comes with the the speaker, uh, with the with the jack. Right, same thing again. Make sure you put the jacket or shroud or whatever you want to call this on the cable first before you start soldering right there we go now, if you're going to use the heat shrink option, and I'm going to do both just for uh, example sake, you need to put the heat shrink on now at this point. And the point is to put the heat shrink on the positive terminal or the positive wire. Remember I showed you before that you decide which is the positive. You, In this case, the red line, so you must choose that as the positive. So you've chosen that, then you've got to stick with it. So you can't just suddenly choose this one as positive when this has got the red line. As I said, if it's only got writing on it, well then if you decide that the writing on the side of the cable is the positive wire, then you've got to keep that as the positive. Right, now, first thing I do is I pre-solder these end bits. So they're completely soldered. Okay. Check the back. Yes, perfect solder. Right, next one. Now one shouldn't spend too much time here, otherwise this rubberizing of the jacket will burn off. Yeah, you might need to use the side cutters. Now this is overkill. I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes the heat shrink and the uh, rubber option. Alright, there we go. Now we need to solder it onto the jack. So I'm going to, as I did in the first one, I'm going to pre-solder this there we go as soon as it takes then uh, take off the sold soldering iron and here for the negative there we go it's taken now remember what I said we don't need very long end bits here so we just shorten them like that and now we've got to remember that the oh we've got to open the mouth here the long nose pliers there we go now I'm going to come with the soldering iron and press this down I start on the on the wire first. Right. There it is. It's important to look at it and check. Yes, it has taken. 
now I need to ooh, it's hot. now I need to connect the positive to the positive pin like so whoops what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resolder this one to move it in a bit more so that it's not pulling on the positive one this is a good example so that the cables are equal length so if you tug on the cable it doesn't pull only on the positive wire that's a common mistake people make there we go going to give it add so, a little bit more solder to it there we go yeah that's taken let's have a look I oh, know it didn't okay boo boo that one Right, now I'm going to press it on this wire. Okay, make sure your bit is clean. That's better. Okay, there it's taken. Okay, yes. Good solder. Now the heat shrink story. Okay, the heat shrink is now covering the positive terminal. There we go. So now what you need to do is we take a match and we just apply some heat to the heat shrink, which then shrinks. There we go. Right, so now that is sucked on there. Now we can close the 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 clamp here. Just do, do not let it bed into the into the cable that's a mistake it must go over the cable these teeth must not go into the cable must go over the cable you see now it's over the cable there we go use the nail that they and there you have overkill so now you know how to do this using the insulation tape quick fix the heat shrink and the plastic this is not heat shrink this is just a piece of plastic and last thing left is to close the cable so we're just going to pull this down and insert the like that, a bit tight here, there we go, and just tighten the jacket. And now you have yourself made, you have now made yourself cables. Now remember to, sorry, now remember to always test the cables the first thing we want to test is did we did we go positive to positive now the tip is the positive so according to me the continuity that beep should make a noise if I touch the tip on the one and the tip on the other right and if I touch the negative no if I touch the negative and the negative yes 
If I touch the negative with the one and the positive with the other, no. And the last thing is to just check the resistance. Okay, it's not in the field of view here. Let's just bring the ohmmeter in there. If you can see that, negative of one and positive of the other. Now, if I touch this while I'm doing the measurement, it's just measuring the resistance of me. Okay, and you can see there's an off light. Now, watch what happens when I touch it. Just see. You see, now you've got to be careful of that because you it now says 5 mega ohms, 4 mega ohms. So you might mistake that but for uh, insulation problem, but actually you're measuring the resistance of your hands because if I go like this and I touch both ends, you can see my ohm ridge is 1 mega ohm. And just for interest sake, let's wet my fingers. This is why it's dangerous to to use water and electricity together. Look at my, uh, let's sweat my fingers here. And bring this closer. Now look at my ohm ridge. I'm now in kilo ohms. Look at that. 140, 170 kilo ohms. While when it was dry, I was in mega ohms. Alright, and that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. You can watch my other video on how to use a multimeter.